Hi, it's Tammy C. Walker, and today's video is paying tribute to Kobe Bryant. We unfortunately lost him and his daughter and seven other people to a tragic helicopter crash. It hasn't sunk in for all of us. Um, just imagine what each and every one of those that lost their lives, family members and friends, imagine how they're feeling. So I want you to um, stick around, watch my video, and let's learn something from Kobe. He was not just a basketball player. He was a dad, a husband, a mentor, a friend, and a champion. So thank you for watching, and let's let's dive in and talk about and celebrate the life of Kobe Bryant as well as every other one that was on that plane. Buying something you cannot afford to pay for. Tap into it. Hi, Tammy C. Walker. I'm back. Thank you for joining me. And today we are paying tribute to Kobe Bryant. Before I get started, please hit subscribe and hit like. So, um, I wish I didn't have to do this one. I, if you don't know my background, I'm a tennis player. I've been playing tennis since 2008. My ex-boyfriend taught me that in 08 right after recovering from breast cancer. And I was just the most horrible tennis player ever. But each year, each summer we would play. And I tell you, I could just see my speed increasing each year. And hey, I, I kind of thought I was as good as him. The last time we played was in 2018, the summer of 2018. I thought I was as good as him. And I'm sure he was being very easy on me. He wouldn't dare beat me down like I knew you probably could in tennis but what they say once you play any sport you're an athlete and I used to play softball frequently too my sister and I, I play volleyball so hey I'm an athlete I study the NBA I study football I study golf a little bit and I of course study tennis and I just I'm just an avid sports watcher I just love sports I don't only watch it for the sports I also watch it to study mental toughness. I should have been a psychology major, but that's where I became a social worker because I still can help, but I, it still um, causes me to have to study the mind and how it works because I'm a therapist and a lot of the treatment I do is cognitive behavioral techniques. So if you do CBT, you have to know about the mind, what makes it work, how to help others become motivated, self-motivated, and also self-efficacy, you know, um, helping others to get, get things done on their own without depending on other people. Anyhow, that's why I study sports, NBA football, definitely the NBA. I like to study sports because it shows you the inner being of that person. So when you think about the greats in basketball, who's going to come to mind? Will Chamberlain, uh, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, uh, oh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, of course, Michael Jordan, of course, um, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. So these are the names that are going to come up. And I was watching the Bulls from the 80s with, during the Michael Jordan era, and I still watch most games that the Bulls play, no matter if they're number nine in the East or if they're in third, fourth, second place, I'm going to watch the Bulls until, you know, maybe until they just get whatever. Anyway, um, back in the 80s, it was us against the Lakers. I was not a big Lakers fan because of Magic Johnson. And before the Bulls became champions, they had to go through Magic to get to the championship. And on the east side, of course, we had to go through the bad boys, the Pistons. So I was like, you know, I always thought the Lakers were Hollywoodish. <laughs> but on comes this 18-year-old Kobe Bryant. Well, who is this guy? Another thing that intrigued me about Kobe, he came straight to the NBA without going to college. 
back in the day, they didn't do that. Like in the 90s, you didn't really do that. So that was something that caught my eye. I'm like, man, this kid must really be good if he's going to skip college and come straight to the NBA. And that's where it started. Then we followed him because Brandy and Monica were hot back then in the R&B um, field. And Monica, Brandy, I'm sorry, had her own show, Moesha. And her and Kobe were good friends. He took on prom. So I got to know him a little bit more. So then as time transitioned, his basketball career really took off and he got married real young. I remember that intrigued me. I'm like, he's just a kid. He's getting married. Then it was the scandal, of course, you know. And I'm mad, like an auntie. Like, why did you do that? Why did you get yourself in trouble? And then to watch him get through all of that. And then, you know, him and Vanessa, whatever problems they had. And then you saw it at the end. It was like, it was like a plane. It just went up, up. They started having more babies and he retired. And just the accolades from the NBA 18-time All-Star player. I mean, that's unheard of. Five championships. You know how hard it is to get one. And being in the Olympics and we can just go on and on. But he was more than a basketball player. He was a dad. And he loved those girls. That smile lit, lit up the world. And he was a husband. And it seemed like they had some issues sometimes. But what I loved about it, they stuck it out. And you already know they were going to have years and years of just happiness and bliss. You already could look at them and tell they had become a united front. And he was also um, a mentor, a friend. And just to hear how he spent his last day... Um, talking to LeBron James, congratulating him for passing up his number. He could have been arrogant and, you know, he didn't have to congratulate him. Last tweet basically was saying, carry, you know, the torch. Go ahead, keep keep up, keep continuing with the game. He checked on Shaquille O'Neal's son, who just recently had heart surgery, to make sure he was okay. Same day that he passed, he did all of this. Him and his daughter, my sister just told me, they went to a mass that morning. And that made me happy, too. Just seemed like he spent his time wisely. Now, we're not saying he was perfect, but, of course, none of us are. And I guess I get a little frustrated when somebody passes away. People want to go dig up dirt or make um, negative comments. You know, that's really that's sick to me, and that's hateful. Like, the person's not even here to defend themselves, and you just want to bring up bad stuff. I mean, we live in a demented, um, sick world sometimes where people... They get off on just putting others down. And what's really sad is someone can die and they'll start getting jealous over that. Why do you keep talking about him? He's not the only one that died. I mean, you can't. One thing about this life, you can't get mad about how big somebody becomes. When people make an album, they don't know that they're going to be Mariah Carey and be worth $500 million. When people dribble a ball, they don't know where that career is going to take them, but it's because of tenacity, grit, practicing, injuries, vocal cords being messed up if you're a singer. I mean, that's why I would say jealousy is stupid because you don't know what those people gave up to be where they are. I'm, I mean, you know, it's just life. When you wake up in the morning, when you were in high school, you went to school and you got those good grades and you went on to college and you went to medical school, you became the doctor. Or even like me, I was okay. Okay student, a pretty good student in high school. But you know, I went to college a little bit later. I finished as a 32 year old. I got my bachelor's at 32 and I got my master's at 48 almost. So nobody sat up here with me and did those papers with me at three in the morning, two in the morning. That was my own tenacity and grit. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you this is what people do when they want something. So it's no need to get jealous because he's well-loved throughout the world. He paid the price. You know, he, he spent his 20 years in the NBA. And basketball is that sport that unites China and France and London and Chicago and New York and Boston and Philly and Miami and you know it's just a sport that unites all cultures so it is what it is and he's gone unfortunately but we can celebrate him and you know what makes this situation just so tragic he lost his baby girl he lost Gianna in that um, 
in that crash. And we already know she was WNBA bound. And he said she wanted to go to UConn for college. And you know she would have made it to the, U, um, the um, yeah, WNBA because he was going to mold her into that. She was already on her way. And it's just tragic. And my heart goes out to Mrs. Bryant is what I should call her, Vanessa. And those baby girls and the oldest daughter, as well as everyone else that was on the plane. At this time, I do want to call them by name. I don't want to discount them because this is somebody's father and mother. And we have, of course, the pilot, Ara Zarbayan and John Atabelli who was a coach at Orange Coast College, along with his wife, Carrie, and her 13-year-old daughter, Alyssa. God bless their family. Sarah Chester and 13-year-old daughter, Peyton, who also played alongside of Gianna. God bless their family. Christina Mauser. This is one of Bryant's, uh, Kobe Bryant's assistant coach. They call her the mother of defense. And God bless her because this lady was a mom. And now her husband is lost. And he said, while the world mourns, you know, this NBA player, I have three girls here who don't have a mom. And it's just tragic and sad. Her, her children are age 11, 9, and 3. And God bless you, Mr. Mauser and the entire Mauser family. And I'm not like that. I know some people say, well, what about the other people? I, I mourn for anybody that I hear dies tragically. You know, it's just sad. I, I'm in HR, and I talk to retirees all day. And they'll call, and they'll be in tears. Mo the, mostly the ladies, the guys don't really show emotion on the phone. But the ladies will be in tears and say, we were together 50 years. I don't know what I'm going to do um, without him. And I have to comfort them. And I try, I always play something with them. It's not a game, but I, it's a diversion. And once we start talking, once they stop talking, I'll say, well, do you have a daughter or a son, any grandkids? And they'll say, yeah, my grandson checks on me every day. And I'll use that as a segue. Or I might say, I see you in Miami. What's the temperature like there? And then they'll say, you know, we'll start talking about the weather and the palm trees. So it's just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little bit speechless, to be honest. I was just distraught on Sunday. Just distraught. I thought it was a bad mm, joke, you know, but I knew it was true because it was on AM, our AM news station here in Chicago. And I, I, I just, I'm still in shock. I really am. It's not that we don't think famous people can die, but first of all, plane crashes are rare. So that's already a shocker. Um, that young, vibrant guy, 41, he still kind of had that baby face. And I'm 50. I'll be 50 in September. So 41 is sounding pretty good to me right now. And I just know he was happy. He looked like he was in a happy place. But what we can learn from Kobe is practice may not make perfect, but it does make us champions. We can learn that regardless of how much money we have, family first. We can learn that although I am a NBA star, one of the best to play the game, I'm still smart enough to know I still have to serve. And I'm going to serve by coaching my daughter's team. I'm not above doing that. And I heard something great today. Dwayne Wade said in 2009, Kobe Bryant called him and said, I need some help. We have to play the Celtics. How do I, um, you know, he was asking him about uh, play. You know, asking him for advice on a play. And I was like, man. And then that's what Dwayne Wade said. The greatest, one of the greatest players ever is calling me for advice. So what we can learn from Kobe is we are always learning from each other. It doesn't matter how smart you think you are, how great of an athlete, how great of a singer, how great of a cook you are, how great of a therapist I am. We all can learn from each other. So um, I just hope that we can take something from Kobe's passing. Like life is... It's not promised to us. We don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow. And what I want you to learn from this video is whatever it is you've been wanting to do, I want you to do it. Do it this month. Do it in February. Do it in March. Take that trip. Learn how to swim. Learn how to do your salsa dancing. Get out. Go dates. Do the speed dating if that's what you want to do. 
go out, have a dinner by yourself. Go see a movie alone. Don't wait on somebody to come into your life and make your life perfect. Get outside. Get some fresh air. Call up a relative that you haven't talked to in a while. Call up a friend. Go see a friend. Go back to school. Find you a better job. Ask for more money. Tell somebody you love them. Tell your nieces and nephews and kids you love them. Stop being evil and hateful towards each other and be more kinder. Say a kind word. Um, you know, get some good rituals going. Practice, practice, practice. Be a champion. That's what we can learn from Kobe Bryant. I'm so sorry that you had to go. And like I said in my Facebook um, post, I hope you can play tennis in those heavenly courts. And I hope to see you on the other side. So um, it's a tough video. It's a tough, tough time for us all. But let's keep their families lifted. Let's take something from his life and know that, you know, this happened for a reason. And maybe to get all of our attentions, maybe to make us a little bit more wiser and kinder to each other and stop taking life for granted. Don't chase money or people. Just try to love more. That's all we can do. And just keep them lifted and whatever it is you want to do, do it. Thank you for watching and God bless and rest in peace to everyone that lost their lives.